All right, so the dog is making her way through the cables. And Good we're all, we're all job. stressed here. <laughs> yeah, we're all freaking out. Welcome to uh, the prequel to Cornish Beatty season three of We're Still Kind of In Between Studios at the moment. Yeah. Um, anyway, hey, hey, hey. Welcome to your weekly Cornish Beatty. It's me, Kieran, and I'm joined by Nick. Hi. And Uma. Hello. I was and expecting me to go second this time, like. Yeah. Like last time, but you tricked me. I'm I, first. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> Number one boy. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why I don't do Nick first, because it's always... <laughs> because then it's always Nick talking about Nick. <laughs> oh. oh, no. I'm just going to say you're sexist towards men. Yeah. <laughs> this is a men's rights podcast now. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the doghouse <laughs> bracket. It's considerably worse. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that leaves me an excuse to go home early. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, good. Oh, good. I was kind of hoping we could wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fucking funny. <laughs> and now I can pretend it's for principled reasons and not just I'm tired. Exactly. I can cancel yeah. Cornish Bailey on my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So today we're talking about the thing on everyone's lips, the buzz about town. Slovakian politics. Um, <laughs> all right, everyone contain yourself. <laughs> I know everyone started like at home when I said Slovakian politics started like pecking at their podcast and <laughs> their phone to like try and get into the podcast because you just so want to be here and hear about this. Uh, but until then, Uma, you have some fun um, <laughs> Spain, oh, I have updates. To wait. Spain updates. I have to wait. I have to wait. Yeah, you politics. need to hear the Spanish. God. God. Tease me about Slovakian politics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Kieran loves edging me with, <laughs> with Slovakian politics. I can still leave, you know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Spanish update. Because speaking of elections. <laughs> speaking of edging. <laughs> speaking of politics. Yeah. There was um, snap elections in Spain in mm-hmm. July, right? There was a whole drama because rich people were like, but I will, I'll be on holidays. Like, how am I supposed to vote? But then, like, I voted and I lived people, in People voted. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, we all survived. Anyway, except Feijó, ah. who was the one that technically won the elections, but he didn't have, like, an absolute majority. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't, you know... Uh, be the president yeah. when he was voted and he also like basically ran a campaign on um saying fuck fuck you to all the potential kingmaker parties yeah yeah basically yeah. um but then the king obviously had to choose him as like the next president of spain which mm-hmm. means that then the congress which is obviously full of our representatives people that we <laughs> spain voted had to vote him like accept him as the president yeah right <laughs> <laughs> obviously they didn't yeah because um he only had like the support of vox obviously cool yeah <laughs> great a great people to have in your corner <laughs> it might, no like like it was so scary because like what if pipe and vox actually win and then we have a pipe and vox government um, yeah, like that yeah. would be horrible but thankfully they he lost by like six votes cool like very little yeah which is still scary mm. But then this means that two days later they had to repeat the vote. It was obviously just fucking stupid because same people voted no, same mm-hmm. people voted yes. And then <laughs> the last update of this is that obviously the king now then, which the fact that the king has to choose the the yeah, candidate I mean, is fucked up. This but. is what the president does in Ireland, like... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is pretty normal, like, parliamentary procedure. It's just that we voted for the guy who chooses and you didn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least at least you voted, but like we didn't. Um, Franco just put him there. Yeah. But yeah, so he chose Sanchez, obviously as the second yeah. most voted. Fejo's person. fucked up. You gotta go now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like well, Fejo failed. <laughs> so now, Fejo has anyone done Fejo? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so now Sanchez. Uh, so he chose Sanchez, <laughs> and then the reaction of the right wing people in the far right mm. has been hilarious like they were like this is not my king my king doesn't re- i'm a republican now. <laughs> i fuck this king da, da. ideologically consistent people <laughs> it's like don't you love spain and the spanish constitution you're always talking about the spanish constitution when it comes to catalonia and país vasco and like all these people that want to be independent yeah and when the king follows the constitution you're like Fuck the king, I'm a Republican now. 
Spanish I'm... Constitution when it's working for me. Haha, <laughs> this rules. Spanish Constitution when it's not <laughs> exactly. working for me. This sucks. Fuck this. Fuck this. <laughs> they literally all share one brain cell and it's enough to not shit themselves. Oh, that's good. Like, that's what in Spain we, have to we share, say. Like... We have to share a Congress with them. It'd be bad. <laughs> <laughs> they... I know. Oh, so I love that. That's great. Yeah, but it's it's probably... He probably won't win as well because he has Yolanda Diaz actively working against him. Cool. Um, then Podemos doesn't exist anymore, basically. And all the Catalans and Basque people are like, fuck you as yeah. well. So he might even get less votes than Feijó simply because... Obviously, Vox and Pepe will also vote against him. Mm. And now the whole point is that there's been protests by the far right and the right wingers because obviously Sanchez is trying to build a government and be elected. Mm. And so he's talking to the Catalan yeah, like pro-independence parties, parties yeah. being like, hey, we will do amnesty law. Like, put them on, we'll be able to come back. Yeah. And that is obviously treason for <laughs> the right wingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be able to, because regarding the Catalan problem, whatever, how they call it. Yeah. The Catalan question. The Catalan question, Literally, yeah. Yes. <laughs> there, hasn't, there hasn't been that much progress in like the four years that he's been president. Mm. Like, he did take out Junqueras and all these people out of prison. But, like, there's been no talks about independence, nothing. There hasn't been, like, an actual process of, like, trying to no. find a solution or whatever. So I don't think it's going to work. And I think they're going to just vote against him. And then we'll have to go to elections in January again. So um, I have not personally been paying attention to all the inner workings of this because, one, I'm just like, Uma's my friend and she'll tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... But the other, the thing that I have noticed, uh, mm -hmm. which I found very fun, and I was thinking about it recently, was uh, in the Cornish Bay Discord, join the Cornish Bay Discord if you're not in it, uh, there is a little like thread that was set up for Spanish election chat for mm -hmm. all the people who were following the Spanish elections. And um, that's still very active. That's <laughs> the thing, like, because oh. we're still we're still in them. Like they yeah, just yeah, yeah. we we don't have a government at the moment. It's still well, it's still Sanchez. Technically, because obviously, yeah, but the caretaker um, or whatever, yeah, the caretaker, yeah, but yeah, like it's just, um, and it's just not gonna happen again in, in October. Like, I think the vote for him must be now in October, end of October, or something like that. Mm. Might clash a little with like the national day, which oh, that'd be funny, will be stupid as well, because I think there's right wing and um, protests like planned against him during the military um parade which, oh sure yeah because the king is also gonna be there and now they hate the king apparently yep so. just, uh, we're getting, like we hold the election on the national day and we're just we're getting word now from the uh, uh, uh the office of electoral uh, uh, uh happenings in spain uh please stop writing in franco okay thanks <laughs> exactly <laughs> please pick from one of the options on the ballot <laughs> oh it'd be hilarious i don't know if it's a. Uh, a working day, but if the election actually was at the end of November, on the 20th of November, which is yeah. when Franco died. <laughs> so like, well, Please stop writing in Please. Franco. <laughs> Only say yes or no. You don't have to give any, another candidate. It's like one of those things if you say Bloody Mary into a mirror three times. If enough people vote for him, he'll come back. He will. <laughs> Wait, Franco died on Franco died on, on Joe Biden's birthday. Is it Joe's, Joe yeah. Biden's? Oh. <laughs> birthday. It makes it sound like it's a real like it's record. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the age does not match up at all. But like, <laughs> like, oh my God. Do you know, Tri you know who Trisha Paytas is? Yeah. That insane course. YouTuber. Yeah. Her daughter was born the day that Queen Elizabeth II died. Queen. <laughs> so yeah. she is going around that her daughter is saying that her daughter is like the reincarnation of the Hell Queen. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, all right. I've teased it enough. We have to talk about <laughs> Slovakia. Slovakia. Oh yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Man, my my So, okay. First thing I want to say, no one wants to talk about these elections really. Like there's 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 basically <laughs> one article going around in English speaking press that's like Robert uh, Robert Fizzo, as I've learned, it's pronounced. It's not Fico. Uh, <laughs> Robert Fizzo, fucking yeah, Bello Fico Gucci. <laughs> yeah, Bello Fizzo Gucci. Um, Robert Robert fucking loves Russia and hates Ukraine, and that's basically the only article in English that's going around Yikes. at the moment. <laughs> and 
there is like a grain of truth to that that we'll talk about but like there's the rest of the shit's way more ridiculous yeah and also at the same time it's just like no one in the english-speaking world like i found like one article in left east which was translated from hungarian um that at all explained why people voted for him like all the english press is making it just like seem like everyone in slovakia voted for like yeah death to ukrainians basically rather than like other things in the country going on and that's why we voted for this guy um so it's it was very annoying i had to deal with a lot of slovakian resources which is fun um but man slovak and czech have put that little like pointy thing uh, uh the yeah, downwards yeah, arrow yeah. over a bunch of letters that have no business having it like uh, an s you, oh, you're like no, why no the s is normal because i understand okay. that one that's like sh. that oh, makes okay, sense sure. but like ch- check has the r oh, with it over yeah. it what does I'm, that sound i don't know ah, fuck. <laughs> it's like scary <laughs> 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 and then like what was the one I encountered in Czech that I was like, oh, it was an N with it over? And I was like... No, oh, that's... but that's fine. Because... In, <laughs> no, in, in Catalonia... No, in yeah. Spain, sorry. It's the because N, Because Catalonia yeah. is N, like N and Y. Yeah. Instead of the N with the little Tilda. heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, Which is N, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, in... Uh, so uh, I support Slovakians <laughs> and their N. <laughs> I support Slovak over the Czech dogs. <laughs> um all right so let's talk about the election um it's oh yeah and i just so i also had to write these notes when i had no internet so that was also fun and in my like frustration and madness i basically just wrote the phrase we are slovak um okay. so that's i'm just i'm saying that's the episode title um with the space in between the o and the v we are slovak instead of we are so back <laughs> okay. um <laughs> nick has finally gotten it <laughs> <laughs> i had to explain it that means it's a good joke um <laughs> all right so let's go through the results um because i think that's probably a good way to put into order the various parties that we have to talk about and then like what was going on this election um first things first we have in a first of many words i'm probably not saying correctly smear s-m-e-r uh, they got 22.95% of the vote, which results in 42 seats. And this party is ruled by Robert Fizzo. Uh On paper, they are like... Oh, te- he's the one that wrote the article. Hmm? No. No. No, I got so confused. No, no, no. no. Yeah. He's the... He's the, the prime head minister. of the party. Yeah, the yeah, head yeah. Of the party Sorry, yeah. Presumed prime minister of Slovakia next. It has been prime minister before. And what's the ideology? Uh, s- uh, on paper, like center left sock dem. Okay. Um, but like but post Europe, post Soviet Eastern European, so oh, okay. it's gonna get wacky. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. So he was he was a uh, prime minister for a very very long time, but he was pushed out in 2018 because of the murder of an investigative journalist Jan Kuciak, um, the first. Uh, oh, sorry, and also his fiance, um, the first murder of a journalist in slovakia since slovakia became a thing in the 90s um there was oh huge protests and he was linked to it so that remains to be seen actually um so yes <laughs> <laughs> so what we know at the moment is he was killed by the italian mafia um what which the, what nato shit is this first <laughs> first thing you learn is that the Endrangheta, the calibrian mafia uh, has a pretty good hold in Slovakia. Um, I don't know how that happened, but it did. Um, and, it's so random. Right? And it makes me want to pronounce Robert Fico's name as Robert Fico, because it's like, oh, yeah, this is Italian politics. <laughs> He's a mafia boss. Yeah, it's Roberto Fico. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's not. It's Fico. Anyway, um, so yeah, the this what we know so far about that murder was done by the Andrangheta, but ordered by uh, a prominent Czech businessman, okay. or no, sorry, Slovak businessman, who in a possible chain of pushing the book down, like he, this businessman t- told another businessman to put a hit out on this guy, and that businessman told another businessman, okay. and I believe there was a businesswoman in there at one point, so progress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> equality yeah. we can all be murderers doing it for themselves 
Um, so yeah, but like these very prominent businessmen in Slovak society also have a lot of links to uh, politics in the country. Mm -hmm. And Smear is one of the like default parties of okay. Slovakia since like becoming a, a, um, a country. And from what I can tell, the opposition at the time just took advantage of these protests, but the case is still ongoing. There's going to be like court actually later this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't be surprised based on just like overall vibes and what I've read about this whole case that like basically every established party is probably going to be implicated at some point. Okay. The opposition just took advantage of the fact that there was huge protests and got the smear uh, Robert out. Um, but so. he's back, baby. But he's back now. Um, things that Robert loves doing, and this is a running, this will be a running theme of Slovakian politics, which okay. is anti-Hungarian rants. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> right, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, there is a substantial-ish Hungarian minority in Slovakia, obviously okay. along oh, the Hungarian shit. border. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not funny anymore. And it's not funny anymore, no. But, well, okay, so, interestingly, it does kind of conflate with being against the Hungarians that are in my country and, like, conflating them with being against the nation of Hungary, <laughs> which is... Re it's very weird. Um, I think we've said it before on this podcast, but anyone who gets, like, kind of... Uh, threatened or concerned with Visegrad, that kind of like formation of four countries. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that always like undermines Visegrad is the fact that like it's Poland and Hungary kind of going insane and then like the Czech Republic and Slovakia just kind of like through gritted teeth just going like, uh-huh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for legitimate and sometimes anti-Hungarian reasons. <laughs> um, so We'll get back to that because there are bigger characters. What uh, was that word that we had on this podcast a long time oh, ago? Oh, Magyarphobic. Mag Magyarphobic, yeah. Yeah, Magyarphobic. Yeah, this party hella, hella Magyarphobic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't used to be. Smear used to try to be like an all Slovakians like party, uh, um, but like Robert kind of turned it into like, you know, those Hungarians, they walk like this, but Slovakians, we walk like this or whatever. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> So yeah, they're reptilians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're the real humans. Everything like all like the elders of Zion myth is just that of Hungarians in Slovakia. Oh like, my yeah, god. Yeah. Um, anyway, so cr the classic thing with uh, uh, with Smear under Fico is corruption and mafia alleg uh, allegiance allegations. We talked about that a little bit, but that's kind of like still unknown. Um, ironic thing that happened between 2018. And like now the elections has had when like Robert Fico was like kind of kind of became persona non grata in like Slovak politics okay. was ironically, he became such a symbol for like evil in the in the <laughs> press that it actually got him a lot of screen time. <laughs> and therefore he was of invited course. onto everything. Of course. It was like I've been cancelled and he was going to yeah, all the yeah, top yeah. yeah. My my cancelled tour of like yeah, the Eastern yeah. Seaboard or whatever. A sold out tour. <laughs> yeah. I've been cancelled. I'm in New York, Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Um All right. So yeah, he never. He basically never left the media, never left like the public uh, imagination. Okay. Stayed grinding. He stayed grinding. Yeah. Fizzo definitely stayed grinding, even though for he was rent free in their heads. <laughs> he was. He was rent free in like the average Slovakian's head. Uh, um, and so when he was pushed out in 2018, there was technically two years of the Smear government left, like the rest of the term, that was taken over by. Another guy, which again really reinforces the the Italianness of all this, a guy called Peter Pellegrini. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> which I did have to look up, and he's the descendant of someone who was shipped in from Italy to build a rail line rail line for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So that's why his last name is Pellegrini. Oh my! God. And that's on his Wikipedia page because apparently everyone keeps asking. <laughs> 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 it's like the ethnicity part of, yeah. of the Wikipedia. Oh yeah, of like a young starlet. But it's it's um but it's not it's not the Wikipedia page for like a female celebrity, so it isn't at the top, it's at the bottom. Whenever they talk about that in politicians, it's either not mentioned or it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom, yeah. It's like some sort of Wikipedia guide. Anyway, 
So there was two years of the Smear government that was basically like a, a lame duck government because everyone was like, yo, fuck these guys. Um, and then they like, in the 2020 elections, lost disastrously to, um, <laughs> to another party that we'll talk about in a second. But why did Robert Fizzo like do well this time? Which is basically, um, he has three things going for him. Um, one is as like a social conservatism which in slovakian politics is basically like status quo okay so a lot of like parties at the moment are talking about like abortion rights lgbtq rights and stuff like that which slovakia doesn't have and thus those things represent change uh well at the same time things in slovakia are getting like stupidly expensive um like really high runaway inflation uh, was obviously very dependent on uh, goods coming from Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus, mm -hmm. uh, now no longer. So, like, he's kind of coming in being like, I'm going to change nothing. And that includes oh, okay. all the, like, social the, progression the good stuff. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the other thing that he's got going for him is he's very, very pro-labor. Um, okay. Yeah. So... He is weirdly um, kind of, he seems to be the only person that has the label of like left wing in like possibly all of Europe that still does like economically left wing things. Um, okay. which I find very interesting because... That's so interesting. It's like, yeah, it's the complete opposite of like... You know when Tories or like you know right wing people are like I'm or neoliberal people are like hmm. I'm uh I'm a liberal with like you know LGBT plus points yeah, yeah. or whatever but I'm I'm a, I'm a conservative when it comes to economy yes and this guy's like the complete opposite he seems to be the actual opposite yes because like um he kind of reminds me of what like a left wing politician in France would have been doing. They still do that. Like the Communist Party ran on a platform similar to that. Yes, but like more mainstream yeah. in the 80s, I think. Like mm. uh, Parti Socialiste was doing this kind of stuff of like, we're going to raise minimum wage. By the way, fuck the gays. All right, see ya. Yeah, um, yeah. Is kind of like the politics here because yes, it, like he was in charge during, he was prime minister of Slovakia during like 2008. Mm -hmm. And when the financial crisis and the euro crisis hit, he... Um, basically passed a bunch of things like severance pay is higher, minimum wage is higher, it's harder to fire people. Um, so he's done like a bunch of stuff like that, which mm. uh, because of that, like every union in the country is still kind of like loyal to him and Smear. Okay. Um, and I assume they're also pretty strong, the unions there. Relatively strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he also talks, and this election he's been doing more of a classic uh, Central European thing that we saw in like Czech elections and we see in Hungarian elections, which is um, talking a good game about protecting pensions. Yeah. Getting yeah. like that older vote and making sure they come out for him, which is something that like Orban does and hmm. uh, a lot of Czech parties do as well. Um, the thing that's interesting about him compared to like all the other parties is he hasn't done the neoliberal thing because like basically all the other opposition parties are what you're talking about of mm -hmm. just like we're going to uh, um, legalize gay marriage but we're also going to sell the whole country for parts yeah. kind of thing um so it's a very um fucked position to be in he's his position on ukraine is also kind of interesting because i think it's being i think it's being exaggerated he said he wants to stop giving military aid, which you could view that as a problem or not. He still wants to give like humanitarian aid and okay. he still wants to let in Ukrainian refugees. But okay. he, yeah, but he was also one of the countries that like was for stopping the grain imports that like Poland and Hungary as, Hungary well. as well did. Yeah. yeah, but Zelensky came out recently and was like, it's okay, guys. Like, yeah. I forgive you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is, this is the kind of position he's in. Um, okay. So, but has he even been like vocally pro Russia or is it just that? As far as I can tell, no, the, the only thing that we get is like, he was against the sanctions and I think he views bringing back Russian gas as a means of like 
stopping the inflation. Um, okay. But, like, I don't... But I'm, it wasn't like, I love Putin. <laughs> no, no, there's <laughs> nothing like that. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what he's doing at the moment. As far as I can tell, the main reason people voted for him was the, like, labor laws and welfare stuff. Yeah, I mean, um, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but another reason that we uh, uh, he was voted for is the the party that was last in charge, which I'm going to talk about now, even though they did not come second in the polls. So oftentimes you hear like jokes about um, what parties in Eastern Europe are called. They're called things like the Happiness Party and stuff like that, and they've got like <laughs> insane names like that. Well, get ready for one of those because this is the party of ordinary people and friends. <laughs> are you serious I think it's fucking Garfield and Friends <laughs> oh my god um, some cartoon ordinary shit. people and friends and friends like. who are freaks yeah. they're not ordinary <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're fucking off the chain yeah what about hap- what happens when like the party splits you just have them like <laughs> the friends. ordinary people and and then it's a separate party called friends yeah um, so this party was the party that was voted in in 2020 um, and people kind of like voted for them as a protest vote against uh, Fizzo and the Smear government and corruption and the mafia just doing kind of what they want. Or killing a journalist. Killing a journalist or the mafia kind of being a beck and call to a bunch of rich guys in the country. Hmm. Bad vibes all around. Uh, so they vote in this party and they vote them in at the beginning of 2020 and uh, oops, uh, pandemic happens and uh, they're not prepared to handle that at all. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, they won in 2020 with 25%, built this big coalition. The coalition started falling apart. Oh, that's the Anne Friends. That's the Anne Friends. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So the coalition started falling apart, if I remember. Yeah, so one of the big scandals I'll get to uh, later, but one of the big things that they talked about was fucking up vaccine orders. Um, So They ordered too little? Ordered too little. They were pretty much the only country to order the Sputnik vaccine in the EU. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I think they had to basically throw out all of it, uh, which delayed the like vaccine rollout in the country itself. Oh, okay. Um, this caused like junior coalition partners to leave, and then the rest of their presidency was, or the rest of their government was basically them just scrambling for enough votes in the parliament and not being able to accomplish anything, uh, which just kind of looked very disastrous. Mm. Um, Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay. Then we get to talk about the leader of the party, though, who is kind of a fun guy. Um, His name is Igor Matovich. And in 2022, he earned the title of Most Distrusted Slovak. (gasps) Oh! Oh wow! With ninety-one percent of the yeah. vote. Ninety-one. <laughs> Written by yeah, the most trusted Slovak from like I don't know a Hungarian magazine or whatever. <laughs> um, which is like so funny that to just be insane. like, be prime minister of the country and then just be like awarded a title that you didn't know was even a thing. Just like you just won the most distrusted Slovak <laughs> title. Uh, and one of the reasons. One of the reasons that happened was um, he faked his bachelor's degree via uh, classic European thing, plagiarism. Oh, um, that is so his bachelor's Spanish degree. Of him. His bachelor's, yeah. <laughs> not his, even a PhD, no like bachelor's, a master. I uh, bachelor's, bachelor's dissertation. <laughs> yeah, which is the easy. Oh my! How do you how do you get in trouble for that? I don't know. I talked about an anime for like two hundred pages on my bachelor's dissertation. I got a C, so like. <laughs> Um, what did he study? What was it? What uh, economics, I believe. Oh, for fuck's sake! Or, uh, uh, yeah. So um, that is so Spanish of him. So yeah, that happened. He admitted to it, but then while in government, which caused a bit of a scandal, an investigative journalist did some more digging and found out that he also faked his master's dissertation as oh, well. Oh my god! He did plagiarism both times. What the, the fuck? That's cool. That's normal. <laughs> I appreciate the consistency. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, if you're going to do it once, you might as well I'm do it I'm surprised it was the bachelor's that they found first. Normally, it would be like the PhD, and then they find that the master's, and then they and then, that. Uh, yeah. The bachelor, yeah. you never really go that far back to... No one well, cares. The, well, the thing was, I think he kind of like that... Fa- 
that was found out before he became prime minister and he kind of like played it off as just like oh i was just a silly student blah blah and i became serious and don't worry i copped on during my master's blah blah and blah. then he was elected and then people better, were like oh yeah. no because like yeah totally i would like if you were a student who got away with doing that for your uh, bachelor's dissertation why, why not, not try it again try? yeah yeah i mean yeah kind of kind of respect that. <laughs> <laughs> i wish i had fucking copied my ma thesis <laughs> Would have been quicker. Oh yeah, he uh, he owns he owns a small media company, technically in his wife's name, uh, which distributed leaflets on his party's behalf uh, <laughs> uh, during the last election. Um, very, the whole party and him are very into this whole anti-elite, anti-corruption politics type stuff. Um, well, yeah, right? <laughs> start with your own people, <laughs> and maybe. Um, but he did this in a very. Um, in a very fun way. He did it via publicity stunts, right? Because when he got elected to parliament, one of the things he did was uh, to show, like, oh, how unfair and, like, how much parliamentary immunity you get by being, like, an MP in this country. Mm-hmm. He parked his car in the middle of a pedestrian crossing in uh, in Bratislava, and then whenever the police would come up to him to tell him to move the car, he just showed his, like parliamentary Parliamentary immunity i'm like in the parliament and he just had his car there for the whole day to kind of like as a protest show like we have too much power (laughs) okay yeah (laughs) it's so like it's like so small potatoes but like at the same time yeah it's like whatever you have other things to worry about yeah right um, I love how that's the pinnacle of power in Slovakia. Is I can yeah, park you my can car park, or whatever yeah. I want. <laughs> <laughs> Not the fact that you have like a, bo- a mafia boss on speed dial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but you can't. That, that's hard. That's like less theatrical to show. Like what, yeah, you show, yeah. you show your phone contacts. Yeah, like, like, listen, I can <laughs> yo, call this, him whenever this guy, I want. This guy's crazy. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So weird thing that happened. And going back to the running theme of the Hungarian minority. It used to be in Slovak politics that the Hungarian minority had like special minority parties mm-hmm. um, that could get past the five um, percent threshold they have in the country. Um, but Olano in twenty twenty, this party was so successful at courting the Hungarian minority mm-hmm. that they all started voting for this party. But now, since that party and that government was a disaster, it just seems like the Hungarian minority this election just dropped out completely and didn't vote for anyone. They didn't vote at all. Yeah, yeah. That is not a good sign. No, not great. Um, Especially if the guy that was actually voted is like, fuck the Hungarians. (laughs) Yeah, fuck fuck Hungarians. And we hate the Hungarians. (laughs) We all know they love soup, don't we, folks? (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love soup Ooh, love Hungarian <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> they was funny crazy. oh no Kieran just got our show cancelled in Slovakia <laughs> for anti-Hungarian sentiment um, it, I just I just love imagining Robert Fizzo being like all of like Trump's impersonations of Biden but it's him just do, pretending to be a Hungarian <laughs> it's like the audience is going fucking wild for it um, I went to Hungarian they wanted to make me goulash <laughs> I said no. <laughs> like what? Well, like okay, yeah. Um, all right. So then, party that came second. Talk about this a little bit uh, uh, quickly. Is basically like progressive Slovakia. Seventeen uh, percent of the vote, thirty-two seats. Basically, everything you know about Macron, it's, it's this party. Ugh. But it's called. It's led by a guy called uh, uh, Mikhail uh, Shimetska. Um, so yep. Yeah. Center right economically, progressive on culture war issues, as we were saying earlier, wants mm. to sell a country for, for parts. Um, campaigned on being anti fizzo like, which, sure. Yeah. Uh, and frames the whole election as democracy versus autocracy, is kind of like the argument they're doing. Oh, calm down. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where they lost <laughs> yeah. the people. They might be able to form a government because who knows what the, like, party, like, coalitions will be. Um... All yeah, right. so how does it, sorry, does, how does it work there? Like, now the parliament has to, like, in Spain? Yeah, or? yeah, so, like, the, the president of... Well, the Congress, were Yeah, they? the president of Slovakia has, like, said, all right, Robert gets first go up trying to make a government, and mm-hmm. if he can't do it, then it will be this uh, Mikhail guy. Mm-hmm, yeah. okay. Um, but and they have to vote for him, the, the parliament? Yeah, he has to get enough parties to say, like, this is the government, we, we okay. agree, yeah. yeah. Um, which then leads us to our third party, which is the party run by formerly mentioned Peter Pellegrini. Um, <laughs> after the disaster of Smear in 2020, he split and made his own party called um, 
the Hungarian word for voice, or sorry, not Hungarian word, Slovakian word for voice, which is H L A S Hlas, I think. Hlas. Hlas. <laughs> I don't know either. You know what I want to know though? I want to know. I want to know what his position is on the Polish. <laughs> <laughs> but like agriculture minister saying that uh, oh, on pasta polish pasta is better than italian oh yeah pasta. i was thinking the same thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is, this is that's what i want to know from uh, <laughs> peter pellegrini or whatever yeah, his name like, is. yeah what if an italian's a slovak is probably the closest <laughs> exactly. that we can get to he's like slovakian italian pasta is better than <laughs> polish and italian pasta superior slovak eggs <laughs> <laughs> Um, Halas Halas kind of attempted to carve out a position as being like an actual left alternative of like we're going to do all those cool welfare things and also let gay people get married Um, but yeah so that didn't really work out and they're probably going to go into government with Smear Mm. we talked about Olano I mean they're old friends exactly Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um we talked about Alano, so there's basically only two parties that I want to quickly talk about for, uh, because they're just kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> one, uh, and these are the only other parties that got into parliament because there's a 5% threshold and like the most voted for party only gets like 22% of the vote. So it's pretty, mm-hmm. it's chopping off a lot of people. But first we have the KDH, which stands for Christian Democratic Movement. Of course, there's yeah. always one. <laughs> always one. You gotta, we're going to do CDU again. Yeah, we're exactly. Give that a go in Eastern Europe. Uh, 6.82% of the vote. And the party is run by a guy called Milan Marieski. And um, fun thing about him is if you Google his name, you get zero results. And that little thing that says, some results have been removed in Europe due to uh, um, the, the European <laughs> right to be forgotten. <laughs> Which is never a great sign. <laughs> so he's a raging Nazi or, so or the, a pedophile or, a or pedophile something. Or yeah. Horrible. Yeah. So there's probably something deeper going on there. The only thing I could find from his Wikipedia page, in which doesn't exist in English, does exist in Slovak, is that he has referred to LGBT people as a plague. So yeah, oh, cool. That, that would do it. Yeah. However, the thing... No, that, that I'm not sure that would do it because well, no. in Slovakian it's politics, Google. you wouldn't get that removed. Yeah, You'd just be yeah. like, yeah, I'm right. Why are you booing? Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so that's that party. They're just like, Christian conservative, economically conservative, basically the CDU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then you have SAS, uh, which stands for Freedom and Solidarity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, the hippies. Again, so that so we've had a party that's basically exactly like Macron, and now this is the party that's exactly like Lindner. Um, mm. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I was wondering which direction were we going to go with Freedom and Solidarity? Like that could also weirdly be like. A uh, an Austrian, uh, no, sorry, a Slovakian or Eastern European, uh, just right wing party, like really pro Russia or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, we'll get to that one. Um, oh. <laughs> so this is like this is a guy. Uh, this party is really Austrian economic school, really libertarian. Oh, boo, nerds! Yeah, oh, yeah. God, mm-hmm. they so like kids who got wedgies in high school. Pretty much, <laughs> the leader of the party, and I believe also the founder, is a guy called Richard Sulik. And Richard, Richard, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that's a name there. <laughs> but so is Pellegrini. So I, I don't yeah, know. fair, yeah. I don't uh, know nothing about yeah. Slovakia. <laughs> yeah. Um, Richard Richard Sulik um, studied economics in Munich uh, in West Germany. He's technically a refugee who came back, um, which is very funny because as as he's quoted as saying, as an immigrant myself, he says that a lot. He opposes migration. <laughs> What a fucking dickhead! <laughs> oh, so they wait. Are they like? Are they like um, Austrian, ec- like Austrian economics, liber- like libertarians, where they're also like racist? Oh yeah, yeah. He said specifically because they're too Muslim. <gasps> oh, okay, cool. So it's yeah. like the like it's like the 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 old version of the AFD, like mm. the one that was more economically like like yeah, like yeah. Austrian school of economics. But 2014 guy- AFD vibes. But also. Very, very Eastern European because this guy's main claim to fame, and Nick, I think you'll love this, is he single-handedly went back when he was first started in politics, when he was an advisor for a previous government, he uh, he created, he's considered the father of Slovakia's flat tax system. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Every, <laughs> the tax in Slovakia, income tax is 19% for everyone, and it's also 19% VAT. 
yeah. uh, sales tax. Um, so, yeah, there you go. He started a company while he was in college called Fax Copy. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Again, Christian Lindner vibes. Anybody who starts a company while they're in college. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fa- who, wait, so he grew up in Germany. Was like I gotta bring faxes back to, <laughs> yes, to right. where they never <laughs> like go west is playing while he shows Slovakians yeah. their first fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> go west. Um, so also big proponent of not bailing out Greece in 2011. Uh, he was in the European Parliament when that was happening. And yeah, his flat tax plan was also his like dissertation when he was in University of Munich. So he just took uh, that and brought yikes. it to Slovakia. Um, so yeah, I love yeah, I, lo- I love taking my thesis and making it law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what law is this? I don't know. I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> Classic European politics. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to the last party uh, that made it through the threshold with five point six three percent of the vote and got ten seats. Uh, the SNS or the Slovak National Party. Oh, These are the no. Here we go, baby. <laughs> Buckle up. Nationalist party based on European Christian values. Puffed. Anti-abortion. And um, then we get into the leader of the party, a guy called Andrei Danko. Um, <laughs> which, Goofy ass name. If they're not doing like dank meme puns yeah, yeah, with yeah. that i don't know what they're that's that's just leaving them on the table so his politics are um he wants a burqa ban um so classic uh, like the french um there was a scan okay fun scandal with him when he was the speaker of parliament in 2016 he was uh promoted eight ranks to captain because he's a member of the reserve slovak army Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, like, literally overnight, he was promoted eight ranks. And everyone was like, that has never happened. Yeah. He's so- just so good. And- <laughs> He's just so good. <laughs> that has never just happened. I don't understand. Like- <laughs> it never happened in Slovakian history. And they were like, it's also never happened in Czechoslovakian history. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah, because there was no one good enough until <laughs> yeah. him. I'm just- Captain Danko, just like. Yo, he can double jump. <laughs> He can tell a Hungarian just by looking at them. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I'm getting to that stuff. Um, oh, no. Also, classic European politics, plagiarized his doctoral thesis. Okay. Oh, doctoral is hey, right. Hey. He faked the PhD. Oh, so he is, he is, he is. He is like, fully European. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've made it. Um, he also, at one point, bit of a scandal, delayed a president from being sworn in because he had an impromptu, unscheduled speech. He just started giving. He just started giving a speech. It's like in a musical, and someone just burst out into song. (laughs) He just burst out into speech. Uh, The party, the SNS, is very, very, very um, (sighs) anti-Hungarian as their as their big thing. Um, Not so much with Andrei Danko, but with their uh, um, former leader from 1994 to 1999, one Jan Slato. Uh, uh, No, Slota. Slota. Sorry. So, um, recently, the party's website has published a map that divided uh, all of Hungary between Slovakia and Hungary uh, and Austria. Um, so, like, they just they're just releasing partition maps Jesus of Christ. Hungary. And the former leader uh, Slota was investigated for crimes uh, at one point. And what they found his 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 list of crimes is arson, grand theft auto, and assault. Uh, a while in court, he stated the following: "I am proud of giving that Hungarian a black eye." <gasps> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God! What is it with Europeans hating <laughs> their neighbors so much that you will fucking elect? <laughs> this be my so whole politics. <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, the party is seen as less willing to support hun- Ukraine. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> and is uh, very pro-Russian. Um, <laughs> Pretends to be shot. Yeah, right? So the other two things that I want to mention about Slovak politics before we uh, uh, wrap up today that are kind of like context to this whole thing is um, there's accusations that Orban opened the... the uh, stopped policing the border and let a bunch of refugees through to Slovakia. Uh, with the belief that he did this to help uh, Fizzo get elected again. 
Um, okay. Because it forced Slovakia to uh, close their border with Hungary. Hmm. Uh, they've also closed their border with Poland on a kind of like, we have to stop the refugees thing. Um, and that was in the press and people are kind like a lot of analysts are like, and basically Orban was able to force the issue and kind of make Fito, who was more anti-immigrant, seem like a more natural, like, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the contender. Um, okay. So one of the other big issues in this election, which unfortunate, which also colors like Fito's win as like very unfortunate because we did talk about like most of the motivation is like these labor and welfare issues and cost and thus like cost of living issues as well, uh, which is like motivating people. But like the issues of LGBT reproductive rights and sex education were yeah. like also huge topics um, of the debate. Um, two queer people in Slovakia were murdered in October, uh, earlier this month, basically. And that, oh, sorry, this would have been last year, actually, uh, October last year. And this has basically forced the conversation of LGBT rights in the country because the impression seems to be that a lot of people in Slovakia were just kind of pretending it wasn't a thing in the country. Okay. Um, and then like when two people get murdered for this reason, they're just like, Oh, maybe uh, we do have a problem. Yeah. And it stops being a little bit of like, it stops being like less of a, you hear that kind of defense of like, Oh, gay marriage is just kind of like this luxury. It's this liberal kind of like whatever. Yeah. And it stops being like less about that and more about like, Oh no, people are getting like hurt murdered, and dying. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of harder to like, roll out that argument yeah um but still this guy was elected and he's yeah against and he's like against that. like trying to like expand lgbt rights in the country and there's also like uh, a party that didn't make it past the threshold which is uh the people's party our Sl- our slovakia uh people's party comma our Slova- our slovakia it doesn't really make sense but anyway <laughs> uh they put up a billboard basically stating there are only two genders like outside of bratislava just like, <laughs> yeah, well. just want to get that out there. Um, they're obviously an incredibly fascist party, and the only like other than the huge list the of name like, didn't give it away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, you should see their party logo. Um, it, it's bad. It's like it's just the SS Totenkopf. Um, well, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. Almost. I mean, I think it was literally this. It's like a play on the the same logo that like the fascist sympathizers sympathizers in slovakia used oh, during yikes. world war ii uh i'm trying to get a picture up for for the for our uh, uh, uh co-hosts yeah i'm looking it up right now people's party our slovakia this this cross oh yeah 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 <gasps> yeah uh, yeah in the in the green circle which like, they can kind of get away with because that like that like cross is in their um the crest on their flag okay um so that's the kind of like oh we're not really that fascist and then like you look at any of the other things they've done um they've been associated with like neo-nazi militias and things like that um the only kind of like funny thing i could find about them is that the party was founded uh with the name party of the friends of wine i i don't know what that's a reference to is and that the, like maybe a Slovak dog whistle? Yeah, like, oh, I'm, I'm a friend of wine, which means fascist in Slovakian. I don't know, but yeah, they used the to be called fuck? that. And um, yeah, so that's that's everything I could find out about Slovak politics. And I'm assuming everything to know about it. <laughs> oh my God. It's mostly about uh, the mafia having Italian names, but we're not Italian hating gay people and really hating Hungarians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely mix of people to choose from. Absolutely, eh? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, God. Fizzo, and what's the fu- what do you think the future for Slovakia is? It's, I think, like, I think... He's Fi- gonna... He's gonna Fizzo is back, uh, yeah. for sure, because he's... I think he's got, like, a natural partner with um, Halas, the Peter Pellegrini's party. Yeah. Um which will probably push him on left issues and maybe actually stop like left economic issues and stop him from being like particularly egregious towards like ethnic and sexual minorities. Um, Not that like anything good will happen, but like bad things won't uh, or at least hopefully not. Um, But 
Fizzo and Smear in the past have done coalitions with parties firewall, like we just yeah. talked about. Like there is that that firewall of like we will not work with the AFD or even the firewall of we will not work with Vox as much as that exists in Spain mm-hmm, mm-hmm. does not exist in Slovakia. Yeah. Um, but I mean, well, in Spain it's bullshit. Like Pepe was like we will not and then yeah, there were the, the so, biggest coalition. Same right? thing is happening in Germany but yeah. like in Slovakia, they didn't wait until, like, they were doing, like, gangbusters in the polls to finally say, like, oh, we'll work with them. Yeah. Like, these, like, Slovak National Party or, like, one they think was called We Are the Family, which didn't make it in this time, which is, like, very, very right wing. Yeah. They've worked with before, like, even when they only got, like, 5% of the vote kind okay. of thing. Like, it, it's it's... These are the kingmakers, unfortunately, in Slovak politics. You guys have Yikes. like your your regionalist uh, uh, language minority rights parties, and they have. God, I hate Hungarians. I don't love doing the Roman salute parties. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that is fair. Yeah, so um, not I great. I can't stop. I just I can't stop doing it. Smear is very strange though, because like, unlike Orban, unlike Poland, very pro-European. Um, oh, okay. He was, he was the person who brought Slovakia into the euro. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, they like, use the euro, gonna, which yeah. is like they're the only one of those four countries that uses the euro. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, he just kind of like, he kind of constantly insists that like Slovakia has massively improved by being in the EU. We are great. We love being in the EU, kind of thing. That like, which is why I think this government doesn't get as much attention as the Hungarian or the Polish one does in like English speaking press Mm. Um, because and like, yeah, now that he's not necessarily playing, like following the NATO line is now when English speaking press starts talking about him a bit more. Okay. But he's always followed the like EU line. So, so he's like, he's not bothering anybody. He's not. Yeah. We won't cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But like this, this country has like the same population as like Austria. Like it's like a relatively big, uh, like European country. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Slovakia. Now you know everything about it. Yeah. We are Slovak. I'm going to insist. (laughs) That's a great name. I'm naming the episode. (laughs) You can't stop me. Listen, if you edit it, it's, it's yours for the taking. Yeah. So that's that's how it works in course. That's how it works. Course, yeah. baby game. how whoever adds the episode gets the name whatever the fuck they want. Honestly, like when when Nick and I had to do episodes like yeah. a couple of weeks ago on our own, mm. Nick was like, "What should we name it?" And yeah, it's because you enter the fugue state where as soon as we're done recording, we've forgotten everything we've said. Exactly. It's yeah. like I we black out during recording and then it's like, oh, we need to be witty with the name. Yeah, yeah. Cut and catch, catch some eyes. And my brain is just like, English? I don't speak it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I will never... I'm just like an oracle. I just... <laughs> uh... <laughs> when you're editing, you're like... <laughs> No, when I'm podcasting and then I just turn back to normal and then I'm like, what what happened? Like, yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can't yeah. see Nick. If you come to a live show, you will see it. But his eyes actually get white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they roll glow. back to the back the pupil, of his head when he's back. speaking on the yeah. mic. Actually, I have to podcast from a cave. <laughs> 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 he's not actually here with us. We don't it's tell just you astral th- projection. <laughs> this is actually behind the scenes, but he always like most of the things Nick says on the podcast are just like you know the future of the Hellenic stage, how well Sparta is going to do, <laughs> are the when the Persians are going to come, whose firstborn sons are going to die, things like this, the yeah. harvest in like various oh yeah i also yeah. i demand a sacrifice every time we yeah, we there's a goat the the studio just constantly smells of dead goat <laughs> yeah. oh, if blood. i don't get my sacrifice i will not podcast <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah good luck finding out about wheat yields in the aegean sea motherfuckers <laughs> without me <laughs> uh, all right and with that Ciao, ciao, everyone. Oh, yeah, shit. Uh, come to the live show, 14th of October, Noisy Rooms. This will also come out before that episode yeah. that, that happens. So, yeah, come and see us. Come, come see, us, see live. us live and bow before me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Come see the dead goat. Or sacrifice <laughs> yourself in front of Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Free in for anyone who brings a dead goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ciao, ciao, motherfuckers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>